talking of deuterium again in the Philippines. Every time there's an oil crunch as now, people talk about substitute fuels, and such talk invariably leads to the most amazing substitute of all, deuterium, that comes from the most basic element, and thus will never run out. It exists in large enough quantity for world use only in the Philippines. Once mined from the seas, it can put RP in the center of world trade, solve the debt crisis, and make billionaires out of long-suffering Filipinos. But as with many things, Filipino extraction of deuterium has yet to move from mere talk to real work. Only in the Philippines, indeed. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen, but has twice its mass, thus its nickname is heavy water. Scientists discovered in the early 1930s that, by electrolysis, hydrogen and water can be separated from oxygen. The resulting deuterium held promise as a potent gas. But they didn't know for what. Not until the 70s did deuterium come into industrial use as a coolant in nuclear reactors, although war intelligence holds that the Nazis propelled the V-2 rockets with the gas. Jules Verne had predicted in 1874 that water from the seas would be the fuel of the future. When Dr. Joseph Bigelison found that hydrogen from water can electrolyze naturally into deuterium gas at room temperature, that came true. The US, Canada, Germany and Sweden have experimented with it to run cars, trucks and jets. Called Lee HV, the fuel from water also is transformed into solid hydrogen for the Challenger and Columbia spacecraft. Deuterium as fuel is said to emit no pollutants like carbon monoxide. Coming from the water family, its emission is in the form of steam or water vapor. As such, deuterium can replace petroleum and its liquefied gas form for cars and kitchens. Even for power generation to light, heat in cool homes and offices, and to fire up factories. Problem is, natural electrolysis is a slow process, speeding it up artificially entails high electricity costs that would jack up the price of deuterium to five times that of fossil fuels. Comes now more mind-boggling science. New oceanography shows that deuterium exists, in huge amounts and liquid form, in the deepest seabeds. It has lain there since the Earth was born billions of years ago. And natural electrolysis continues to produce deuterium every second to this day. At ocean depths of 3 kilometers, hydrogen begins to split from oxygen into deuterium at a pressure of about 10,000 pounds per inch 2 psi. Because it is twice heavier, it sinks to the bottom where it combines with other hydrogen isotopes. More amazingly deuterium started to gather in the largest known clumps hundreds of millions of years ago in the Philippine Trench, the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean. It still does, scientists aver, as sure as the Earth rotates to the east, deuterium formed in electrolyzing Arctic waters flow south into Central America, then trot 12,000 kilometers under and across the Pacific into the Philippine Trench, the way leftovers swirl into the drain of a kitchen sink. The Philippine deposit of deuterium is calculated to be 1,300 kilometers long, 80 kilometers at its widest, and 4 kilometers at its deepest points. Even if extracted and converted into fuel gas, it naturally will replenish within a day from the Earth's rotation. Similar trenches, though not as big, are known to exist in the Marianas in South Africa. Lying deep in the ocean, deuterium is out of sight and out of mind. In these days of soaring prices of imported crude oil, the natural preoccupation of energy experts is to switch to locally available fuels. There's natural gas in Malampaya, although itself a non-renewable fossil fuel, supply can last up to 25 years. Biodiesel can be made from coconut oil, and also gas from ethanol and sugarcane. The cost is still higher per liter than refined crude, but it is easier to imagine. Mining deuterium from the ocean floor 7 to 10 km deep would require unimaginable billions of dollars. Still, a group of Filipino-Americans claims they can raise the sum from lenders and other prospecting overseas Filipinos. As far back as 1986, they had proposed to the Aquino government a scheme where they would build the pipes to pump up the deuterium using high-tech adopted from aircraft. They would also develop ways to convert the raw isotope into fuel for power plants and to make cars run on it the way LPG and natural gas already were in use on vehicles. The government was to provide security and set up an export processing zone for lending the fuel and tax-free trade. Revenues were to be split 40 hours 40 minutes 20 seconds, 40% to the proponents, 40 to the government, 20 for operations and salaries. At that time, according to the investors who presented the idea during President Corazon Aquino's visit to Washington in March 1986, two U.S. fuel giants were interested to buy 6 million barrels a day. Japan wanted another 4 million, Saudi Aramco, 2 million. At $7 a barrel, the 12 million barrel daily sales would have fetched an astounding $84 million a day, or $30.7 billion a year. With a yearly 40% share of $12.3 billion, the Philippines in no time would be free of its $28 billion debt. 
$56 billion today. The operation would employ 350,000 direct hires and support service personnel. RP would emerge as Asia's strongest tiger economy. It all sounded too good to be true. Some critics doubted if deuterium even existed, although a simple dictionary check would have proved them wrong. Part of the skepticism was due to raving descriptions of deuterium as God's gift, in his ultimate wisdom, to a forlorn Philippines. And so the talk to pipe up deuterium from the Philippine deep remains a pipe dream. The world's largest deposit of deuterium, which can replace most forms of fuel in powering engines, can be found in the Marianas and Philippine trenches, according to a research by a local group. Former Representative Manises S. Bora and Melky Passis, of Western International Corp., said the Marianas and the Philippines have a deuterium deposit 868 miles long, 52 miles at its widest point, and 7 miles at its deepest point in the Marianas. This deposit, they added, is replenished by nature 24 hours a day through the North Equatorial Current Tidal Flow which carries deuterium all the way from Central America. Deuterium, a form of concentrated hydrogen, is used in the production of natural gas now utilized in Canada, America, Germany and Sweden, to provide fuel for cars, trucks and jet planes, said Passis and Bora, who is running for a precinct two seat in the House of Representatives. Deuterium can replace gasoline, liquefied petroleum gas, liquefied natural gas, avgas, etc. in powering all types of internal combustion engines. It does not emit pollutants or any harmful carbon monoxide and does not cause any environmental problems because it is in the water family, they said. They added deuterium as hydrogen fuel can also be used for cooking, lighting, and heating, and as heavy water fuel for reactors and electric power generation. Aside from the CNMI, only the Philippines can supply all the requirements in deuterium as hydrogen fuel and as hydrogen for food, chemical and metal industries worldwide for the next two centuries. Borja and Passis are urging the governments of the CNMI and the Philippines to promote the deuterium deposit to investors. Borja and Passis reported that prospective investors from the U.S., Japan and Saudi Arabia had expressed interest in the project. The rule of thumb investment estimates is about $200 million for every 1 million barrels daily production capacity, a very much lower investment capacity ratio than petroleum production, they said. At 12 million barrels per day capacity, the estimated total investment is $2.4 billion. Unlimited fuel in the Philippine deep. More than a decade ago, an assorted group of psychics and esoteric thinkers interested us in a theory about the existence of a so-called Philippine gold in the deepest recesses of the so-called Philippine deep off the coast of Surigao in the island of Mindanao in southern Philippines. This is concerning the so-called deuterium element or the hydrogen fuel that can be extracted through a technical process from the water. Back in 1986, already a consortium of mining firms from USA, Japan and Saudi Arabia seemed bent to target production of 12 million barrels per day of hydrofuel. Less than a year ago, a psychic respected even by practitioners of the paranormal and New Age philosophies explained to us that the renewed, vigorous interest of the Philippine and the United States governments in the island of Mindanao was not just of the huge unfished oceans between Mindanao and Australia, nor the Muslim secessionist movement but more so due to the hidden underwater treasure that is found in the Philippine deep. A recent research paper was reportedly lodged with the Philippine Senate just this month for intelligent evaluation. According to estimates the cost of such an alternative fuel to petroleum will only be US $4 to 7 per barrel compared to a war nervous price of US $30 per barrel of petrol oil.